A lot of people ask, what is a plein air paint out? So a paint out is an event that a town puts on that's usually several days long. And you go out and you can paint in the city, in the country, in the morning, in the afternoon, at night, um, whenever you want. So this is in Dexter, Michigan. And I have a hat because of the sun. Need a, a hat. I have a shade buddy. I have my easel set up. And I'm going to paint this little barn, and you're going to follow along. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's go. There's the barn. Here we go. First, I'm doing a little thumbnail sketch. So here's my little drawing, my little sketch. It's giving me an idea. And I love the wind, the skirt blowing on my ankles, and the sound of the crickets. It's an adventure. The first thing I'm doing here is just blocking this in. And the average paint out, I'll do two to four paintings a day, depending on if I do a nocturnal, which is an at night painting. So I'm wanting to just get some real dark in here. I always do your darkest dark first with oil. Well. Most of the time, I don't like the word always because there's no uh, uh, exceptions to that. So see, here's our basic barn. It's sitting in here. What I'm doing now, oops. What I'm doing now is getting this greenery right here. Just blocking it in, squint, and look at where do you see dark. Going to use need some turp to get the paint to move because this is just big shapes at this stage. You just want really big shapes. And this is dark, but it's not as blue. With distance, your eye um, sees greens as more blue. So when you're driving down the road next time, Look at the faraway tree line and you'll know what I'm saying. Isn't this fun? Sometimes painting is just learning to see. Okay. So I have this chunk here. Now we have to go for this chunk out next to the barn here. And it's a warm, more yellow green. I'm just mixing Viridian, Sap Green, and Yellow Ochre right now for this. And this actually comes down from the top. This barn is just way in the background and it's just suggested, so. I'm really excited to have you along with me today. If I paint with other people, I can't do this because it probably annoys them that I'm talking. All right, so the base of these trees where it's darker, because the sunlight can't reach it, it's darker, so we're gonna have to put that in here. That might be a little too cold. Warm it up, little ochre. I like the geometric designs too and the and I want to as much as possible use what's called the economy of brush stroke, which means minimal brush strokes. Put in your you know, put in your paint stroke and leave it. It's hard to do. But it will make your painting look so much fresher and vibrant if you can do it. So when you muddle, 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 you get mud. You don't want mud if you want beautiful color. Can you hear the crickets? hard to see with the sun's reflection, but I've got my 
my line here, my, my nice line, and I'm gonna kind of keep that as much as possible. Now I'm putting a little light in where I see it, up here. And we're starting to get there. Here's the barn. See it? Beautiful. Our next um, step here that I'm gonna do, and everybody does this slightly different, but I'm just gonna kind of squint and look at where I see darker areas in the grasses out here and just kind of put them in. So, see darker here. Keep all your greens varied. Darker here. And I'm doing this very light. I'm using a lot of the Gamsol to kind of water this down because it's going to be a lot of flowers going over this. I painted this here six years ago and it sold and I was so bummed out. I tried to paint another one in the studio, but it's never the same. So we are kind of just dancing, I would call this, dancing with the brush, with the symphony of crickets behind us, and just kind of, you know, this goes all the way up to here. And there's a lot of light and dark, a lot of in here, so. The only thing I don't want to see is like hard lines. There, that's cool. Isn't this fun? Are you having fun? Are you trying this at home? I hope you are. This is so fun and magical and spiritually uplifting and it just changes your mood to be out painting. It's meditative, therapeutic even, I think. Okay, I'm getting a little carried away, sorry. There. So we already almost have what looks like a painting now. I got little pockets of darker in here, way out there. And I just wanna put in a few of them. I'm using ultramarine meridian for these dark, dark areas here. I just feel like it needs to be, felt like it needed to be a little darker up here. These geometric shapes are fabulous. And then there's some dark here. And 
So we need to talk about warm and cool right now too. So greens with blue in them like this are what's called cooler. They're cooler colors. And then greens with more yellows are warmer. Obviously, you know, think of the sun. And then I don't really like this glob here. I'm not really sure why I put it there. So I'm gonna kind of do this and just Soften it. I don't want to lose my strong designs in, in here, but I also want to make sure it's right. So, this is fun. You can paint. Yes, you can. You can do this. Whee! Oh, the crickets. They sound lovely. Next, we are going to put in the point on the barn. Here's a nice trick, too. If you're afraid you're going to touch your painting, you can use another brush as a mall stick. And the top of this is very dark. It's even darker than the tree line behind it, which is pretty dark. Must have steady hands like a surgeon. Good thing I wasn't uh, drinking last night or anything. When you get ready for these paint outs, it's like preparing for an athletic event, really. You gotta get enough sleep, you gotta wear good shoes. I mean, this is nothing but, seriously, it's, it's work. You're on your feet all day in the sun, going from place to place. I need to get one of those cushions to stand on. All right, so we got the basic barn in here. Now, we're gonna mix a little alizarin and a little gray and a little burnt sienna. Oops, I didn't mean to get purple in there, but that's the beautiful thing about oil. Correctable, easily correctable. And then I'm gonna just really lightly drag my brush up. Oh, way too red, but that's okay. I needed a I needed a guiding color here. Sometimes it takes a minute to mix the colors. I highly recommend mix colors at home as often as you can. You want it to look like a barn, you just gotta suggest a little here. There it is. Let me get you in out close. There's our little barn. And I know the sky is this vibrant blue, but I'm debating if I want to just like leave it a nice yellow so it doesn't take energy away from all the stuff in the foreground. So let's see, let's try that. Let's put in a little yellow and white and see if we like it. And if we don't, it's easy to change later, so. Now be careful, a little bit of yellow, as you can see, goes a long way. So you might need to wipe it off, the dry rag. And then put a little white over top of it to kill it. 
There we go. I don't know if I want to leave it yellow. It has been a strange week here, lots of storms. I've painted six paintings already, and, or seven in three days. Today's day four, it's Thursday. Friday night, there's a big show in the tent downtown. That's always a lot of fun. This plein air event here is in August every year, in Dexter, Michigan. I have a lot of friends that paint in this as well. Excellent painters. Yeah, I think I like it yellow. Yellow's fine. We change our mind, we'll change our mind. But for now, I think this is fine. I want to keep this very loose and free and fun. And I don't want... Sometimes if you smooth the background on your far, far tree line, it will give you the illusion of also that it's far away. You know, this is just an illusion. You're putting a image down on a flat board. You're trying to create the illusion of a scene, right? Check this out. So what I'm saying, I know it's hard with the sun reflecting there, is I'm just softening. We have completed. The sky is done. The far trees are done. The barn is done. This is done because we want to leave it loose. You don't want your eye to go back there. You want your eye to come down into the detail down here. So here we go. Now it's time to put in all these flowers and I'm kind of playing with the different color mixes. Certainly these flowers right here are the brightest in the front. So... going to just suggest some of these. They're definitely light here in the front. And I want to keep them soft. I don't want hard lines. Really the only thing in this painting that should have a line is the roof on that barn and that is it. So Well, I'm just mixing various purples. I'm using all kinds of different alizarin crimson and dioxide purple. And I'm just suggesting these. They are slightly backlit, so some of them are darker. I know this is incredibly difficult to see. Basically too, you don't wanna have dot, 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 then they don't look real. So what you want to do is just kind of squint and put clumps in there. They're going to be bigger in the back. They're going to be smaller. I'm sorry. <laughs> They're going to be bigger in the front, smaller in the back. I know it's hard to see, but I'm mixing white with yellow ochre to get a real light color that I'm going to put here in the field. I know in the picture here, 
it's more tan, whereas out here it's much more yellow, but I just think it'll give it better dimension. And it will look better if I can just get some of these nice warm. Got to be really careful right now because you can make mud. So you don't want to blur things. It's starting to get there. Gonna add a little pink here into my flowers. There are monarchs and butterflies, and this is just so magical. Can't even describe it. Just beautiful, magical connection with nature out here at this farm, and I love it. I'm almost debating if I'm getting close to a place where I should stop. I'm going to use the palette knife and I'm going to mix some cad yellow light and white and just load one side of it and put a little highlight and this has got to be done very lightly otherwise it will go on like a glob. So palette knife work is something you do need to practice at home before you use it in the field. But it's just a fabulous touch. I even got paint in my hair. <laughs> Here is the finished painting, and thank you for tuning into my show today. And thank you to all my subscribers and my Patreon followers. I'm going to find another spot, Dexter. Hope to see you at the show Friday night. My book is available on Amazon, Plain Air Painting, Tips and Tales. I have paintings on Etsy, Studio Tamra, my website. I am teaching a class at the Northville Art House, October 1st, 2022. If you want to learn the basics of plein air painting, because you can paint. Everyone can paint. Yes, you can. Here's the painting. Paint on.